You say potato, I say let me show you all you need to know about how to make great potato side dishes. Let's start with Holiday's favorite side dish, mashed potatoes. In my opinion, the very best potato for mashed potatoes is a Yukon Gold. Why, you ask? The flesh is just dense enough that it doesn't absorb any water and it withstands boiling, but it also mashes up light and creamy. First off, peel and cube your potatoes and start them in cold water. Don't forget to salt your water so that it absorbs that flavor. Bring them up to a boil and let them simmer until they're fork tender. Now comes the important stuff. After I've drained my potatoes, I like to throw them back in the pot with the burner turned off. The residual heat from the burner and the pot will help all that extra liquid evaporate out. This is the time to go ahead and add the butter. You wanna add the butter while the potatoes are hot so that it can melt all in there. We don't wanna add any cold ingredients while we're mashing our potatoes because it just makes the potatoes cold. And then you're more likely to get lumps because they mash better when everything is hot. The next most important thing to remember when making mashed potatoes is don't overwork them. If you overwork the potatoes, they get all gummy and gross. I like to mash them using a potato masher right in the pot, but if you want super lump-free, fluffy mashed potatoes, the best way to get that is with a potato ricer. You put the cooked potatoes in, they come out these holes, and it's nice and fluffy. For me, that's just too much work. So I like to do it while they're hot and the butter has melted. You can see how nice and fluffy it is. They break apart so easily. I do the first mashing while it's just the butter. Now it's time to add those other ingredients. So I like to heat up my milk um, or make sure that it's not you know, freezing cold. A little more salt and pepper. And then for a little more richness, and I love the flavor, I like to add in a little sour cream. It'll all come together now. They're not completely lump free, but they're delicious and creamy the perfect mashed potato. I went ahead and boiled some red potatoes to make mashed potatoes just so you could see the difference. These are what gummy potatoes look like. And if you can't see it, you can definitely taste the difference. They almost like stick to your tongue. Let's talk about baked potatoes. The perfect potato for a baked potato is ye olde russet potato. They're super starchy, but when you bake a potato in the oven, we don't have to worry about moisture absorption. So it makes them ideal for baking and also frying. All right, when it comes to the baked potato, do you pierce or not pierce your potato? I am a piercer because that's what my mama taught me. By piercing your potato, it allows any excess moisture to escape, giving you that light and fluffy texture. The thought is if you don't pierce it, it's going to burst in the oven. There have definitely been times where I don't prick my potato. And guess what? It's never blown up in the oven. But if it gives you a little extra insurance, go ahead and prick your potato. Do you wrap it in foil? I do not wrap my potatoes in foil. That's actually going to seal in some of the moisture. We want that moisture to escape. If you do wrap it in foil, be sure and prick the potato. I like to drizzle a tiny bit of oil on the outside. So I like to eat the skin on a baked potato and I like it better if it's a little crispy. So a little oil will help that happen. Next, prick your potato just a couple times just to let the steam escape. I simply set this directly on the oven rack or on a sheet pan. For best results, cook potatoes at a higher temperature, at least 400 and up to 450. The cook time depends on its size. This is a small potato, so it should take about 45 minutes. And for even cooking, I like to flip them halfway through. That way one end doesn't get super burned on the bottom. And that's all you need to know. Hot potato right out of the oven. Beautiful golden brown and, if you can listen, crispy on the outside. Now let's look for that fluffy center. Light, airy, fluffy, it's just perfect. Baked potatoes are the perfect side dish if you're feeding a crowd. They're super easy to prepare, they hold their heat for a while, and they're just perfect. Next up, those delicious potato casseroles. These are your scallop potatoes and your potatoes au gratin. What type of potato should we use? Again, my favorites, the Yukon Golds. They'll hold their shape a little bit, but they're still gonna be nice and tender and a little bit fluffy. First of all, you wanna start out by creating thin slices. The best way to do this is with a mandolin. If you don't have a mandolin, you can use a knife. Just try to slice them as thin as possible. What's super important about the slices is that they're all uniform in width. That way they cook up evenly. You wanna layer the slices evenly as well. So again, that you get nice, even cook times. And don't forget to season every layer. 
You might cover it because you don't want the outside to cook before the inside is cooked, or maybe you don't want to get it too brown too early. So cover it, but let some of the steam escape. Either cut some slits in the top or just peel one of the corners back. To the oven we go. That's some bubbly goodness right there. Now, when you cook a casserole, any kind of casserole really, you want to let it sit for about 10 minutes so that it'll set up better. Let me taste them to see if it's perfectly cooked. Mm. It's perfect. What's great about using the gold potatoes in casseroles, they still have just enough bite to them, but they're still super tender and creamy. Next up, roasted potatoes, and these are one of my favorites as well. Really, you can use just about any potato for this method, but to me, the best potato is, again, the gold. They hold their shape while they're cooked, and they're just starchy enough to absorb some of the moisture that's in the flavoring. I like to leave the skins on when roasting the potatoes. Just cut them into uniform pieces. You want to make sure your potatoes are really dry, so if you did soak them the night before, just be sure you dry them really well on a paper towel. The next key thing to remember is not to crowd your pan. You don't want steamed potatoes. You want them to be able to evenly brown on the outside, and caramelization equals flavor. Besides caramelization, roasted potatoes get their flavor from a little bit of oil and seasonings. You can do whatever flavorings you want. A simple salt and pepper and olive oil is just perfect. Important thing to remember, don't just drizzle the potatoes and season them like that. Be sure you toss them so that they're evenly coated with the oil. If you're going to line your pan for easier cleanup, I prefer to use foil instead of parchment paper for better browning. Another important tip when roasting potatoes, high heat. At least 425 in your oven. And also, be sure and flip your potatoes at least twice during the cooking. This way they get browned evenly on all sides because the brown crispy side is the best side, so why not get all the sides crispy and brown. Perfect roasted potatoes. You can see it's crispy and golden on the outside, but when you mash it, it's a tender, fluffy potato inside. You can really take this roasted potato tip and apply it to lots of other vegetables. And for my final trick, potato salad. This dish is particularly popular in the South, but who doesn't love a good potato salad? So what type of potato is best for potato salad? Well, do you want your potato salad to look like this? or this. It's strictly a matter of preference. Some people like a creamier, more mashed consistency in a potato salad, in which case you would use something that's going to fall apart like a russet potato. But if you want a potato that's going to hold its shape during cooking and tossing, go with a waxy potato like a red potato. The skins are also thin and a waxier potato, so peeling is optional. When it comes to preparation, there's only a couple things you need to remember. First, start your potatoes in cold water and bring them to a boil, then just let them simmer until they're fork tender. Make your dressing in a separate bowl so that you don't overwork the potatoes when you toss it together. And finally, and this is probably the most important tip when it comes to delicious potato salad, is to let it sit. The longer it sits, the better it's going to be, so I love making potato salad the day before. Potato, potato, no matter how you say it, I hope you can now cook with confidence any of your favorite potato side dishes. For more great videos like this, don't forget to follow all recipes on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. This is the kind of utensil I like to lick. You know what I meant. Leave that out.